Reading records is the simplest operation in Firebase. Hello and welcome back. My name is Afzal and you're watching Flutter Fire series. In the last videos, we have created Firebase project and Flutter application. In this video, we are going to create Cloud Firestore database. Now it is not same as our DBMS table. It works on a document DB and just like a MongoDB or some other database which doesn't have relational schema but it is working on a document structure. And here you can relate collection with a table of RDBMS. And unlike relational database, collection have documents where you have unique document ID and then against each document you store key value pair, which is kind of a JSON value where you can store string, double, boolean, array, map and all kind of basic data structure. And one quick tip that you cannot proceed without having one record in the document. So let's go ahead and add one product, which is milk in our grocery list and i hope two liter of milk should be fine i think so all right now this is our first record in the table or collection whatever you call it and instead of saying it product i want to rename it as name so we have a product and this is name of the product and the other value is quantity which makes more sense to me so now we have record in our database. Let's go ahead inside Flutter application and try to fetch this record and map it to the list view. So first thing what I'm going to do is override the init state because we want to load the data at the time when page is initialized. You can also do this on click of a button or any event you want, but I just want to fetch it when the page loads. So for that, I'm going to create one method, which is responsible of fetching the records from Firebase and that I'm going to call from init state. And of course, this method is going to be asynchronous so that we can wait for data to come. Now here you have to use Firebase Firestore dot instant, which come from the Firebase package cloud Firestore specifically and you have to specify the database name, the collection name, which you have created on Firestore. Actually, I should call it table name, right? So basket item is our table name. All right, now I could have done the mapping in the same method, but uh, in the next part, you will come to know why I have split the map record and fetch record in two different methods. So what I'm going to do, depending on the signature of the record, I'm going to create one more method, which is going to accept this record okay and for each record generated i'm going to create one item which is going to be the basket item and then i will map it to the list view so now you can see that our record is of type string comma dynamic so it has multiple items each with a key and a value so we need to convert it to a model so that we can read it easily and we can bind to the ui more easily so let's go ahead and create a model file which i'm going to name as basket.dart and basically here we need to create the json model or the model which will represent our item now looking at the document i can say that there are three fields one is the document id itself in the middle you can see and two of the custom field namely name and quantity so we have total of three fields to create so let's go ahead to quicktype.io and here i'm going to write a json which represents those three properties and it is going to automatically convert or generate a model for me so let's go ahead and just try to simulate that data in the form of properties we have so we have id property we have name property and then we have quantity you can write any value but make sure it matches with the data type you have defined so because here quantity is a string i'm just writing it in a string format you may have amount or something so make sure you write a double value and also you can define a name of your dart class so that it makes more sense while you copy paste this file or copy paste this code inside your file now this whole process is totally optional if you want you can write all of this code yourself if you like to do that but i prefer to write json and let the engine do the work and convert it to dart object which sometimes becomes very helpful when you have a bigger json to deal with 
Now there's a one issue in this generated Dart code that it doesn't follow the null safety feature. So you have to explicitly define which field is required and which field is optional so that it stops giving this error and warning message. So quantity may be optional. You just want to define the item that I want to purchase this item, but you don't want to specify the quantity. So that's your personal preference. And according to that, I have generated the model. Now back to our page. So here we are going to define list of basket items and uh, initially it will have empty value at the state level and once we fetch the record and map it, it's going to populate data and then we are going to fire set state. So everything is updated inside list view. At this point, you can update the item count to basket items length. And as you know that we don't have any item, so you're going to get empty list, right? And now is the time where actual fun will begin. So let's collapse everything and focus on map records method. So inside records, there are some other information as well. So what we're going to do records dot docs, which actually contains all of the documents you have on the server. Now for each of the item inside this docs, we are going to map it to item variable. And now from that item variable, will fetch all the information and create basket item object. Now this ID will come from item.id, which you have generated automatically on the document server, if you remember that. So you can write something like item.id and for name, we are going to fetch that from key value pair. So you can write item and then specify the key you have mentioned on the server. So instead of putting dot, you have to use a square bracket and just put the key you have used. And same thing we are going to do for quantity. So we'll write item inside a square bracket, the key of quantity, which is again quantity. And here you have the complete object. Now internally, the dot is going to loop through all the document elements and it is going to give you multiple items in the form of iteratable. So you have to manually convert that iteratable to list. And for that, what you can do simply at the end of the map method, you, you just write dot to list. Now, this is something internal inside Dart language. It converts the iteratable to list. So you don't have to worry about that. And perfect. We are almost there. So just capture whatever you have generated so far in a local variable. And then you have to update the state. So basically you have to update basket items with the newly generated list. And once you do that, you should see updated record on the screen. Now, let me go ahead and give it a restart because the method is being called from init state and that has already been triggered. So once I restart, you can see we have one item in the list, which is saying item zero. So let's go ahead and quickly update that. So instead of this hard coded string, I'm going to fetch data from basket item. So I'll write basket items at current index and we have the property name and that we will show inside title property. And the same thing we are going to do for subtitle instead of showing name, we will show quantity. And of course, quantity is optional. So you have to do a null check. And once you do that, you're going to see the product from Firestore inside your list view. Perfect. So we are done with today's tutorial. In the next video, I will show you how to keep fetching, how to listen for this record. So if you are going to create a new record, how automatically is it going to update inside your application without having to reload again and again. So make sure to subscribe the channel, hit the like button if you haven't already. Let me know in the feedback as well how you're liking this Firebase series and I will see you guys in the next one.